Charles Blackman. Hey. Charles, I tell you, man, I'm just so glad to see you. Uh, i tell you what, I, I'm glad you have me right here. Let's tell everybody a little bit about Charles Blackman. First of all, where were you born, and when did you know that you were going to be in the record industry? Wow. I was born in Chicago, Illinois. Oh, Chi-Town. Yeah, yeah, that, that's home for me. Um, as far as the record business, I think the, when, I, when the bug got me, my, my mother was a singer. Okay. Uh, my father, too, as well. He couldn't sing as well as she could, but, but nevertheless, they were both uh, very influential, especially in church. And I think the first time uh, that I had the opportunity to sing, I was about five years old. I still remember the song, This Little Light of Mine. I'm, I'm going to let, let it shine. Yeah, yeah. And as a child, that's, uh, my mother basically influenced me until I began to get older and see a few things myself. How big was your family, Charles? Oh, eight, ten all together, well, including my mother and father. I had to, uh, five brothers, three None sisters. None of the only. brothers and sisters uh, wanted to get in the entertainment industry? Every single one of them. <laughs> we had, in fact, we had, a, we had a group called the Blackmans. The Blackmans? And, yeah, well, we yeah. wanted to be like the, uh, the Jackson Five at the time. And uh, we would stand around, and my brother would hold a mop, and I'd hold a broom, and uh, all of us were out of key, but <laughs> well, we, <laughs> we so, were extremely so, excited. Uh, so I take it that you guys didn't have real instruments back then? No, it's kind of hard to do a show playing the mop. <laughs> <laughs> now, it, it, Charles, I, I know you probably get this question asked uh, uh, a whole lot. Okay. Uh, they, they tell me you lost one of your brothers. I did. I lost my brother about uh, 10 years ago to uh, lung cancer. Yeah. Okay. Miss him a lot too. Miss him a lot. I I I I can't imagine. And from what I understand, you you had a battle with it yourself. I did a couple of years ago. I was uh, diagnosed with uh, uh, tonsil cancer, and through God's amazing grace, uh, uh, I'm in remission now. So I'm just doing it a day at a time. I'm very excited. Okay. Now I tell you what. Tell me about the temptation. Wow. Uh, just, How did I, you end up in? The number one group in the world. It's actually the Temptations Review. Okay. You know, because I, di I didn't sing in Otis's group. Okay. I sang with uh, Eddie Kendrick, uh, David before he died, and Dennis Edwards. Uh, uh, one day I'm sitting at home just having a, a good time with my, with my friends, and I get a knock at the door. I look out the door. I said, oh, man, some guy out here looks like Eddie. I didn't pay too much attention. I told him he had the wrong... Uh, wrong house and so I went back I was having I was so engulfed with talking with my friends and then I, I heard the doorbell ring and a, and a kind of a heart and knock and lo and behold I opened and there's my idol standing there <laughs> Eddie James Kendrick and I tell you I, I almost I, Eddie oh, was the man yeah, okay. let, let me he tell you something the man. my lord uh, he came in and he said look I've been watching you I think he saw me on Star Search and uh, he gave me a call. He told me he had been following my career. I was working the Chitlin circuit then, and he, uh, when he came into my life, it changed it. Uh, I began to travel. In fact, he took me to more countries than most people have been to cities. He really changed my life. Okay. And I spent quite a few years with him and, until he passed away. In fact, he passed away, I never will forget, 1992. Um, and he passed away. He made his transition then, and he's with the Lord now. Okay, but man, I, I tell you, Eddie is definitely going to be missed, man. Oh, yeah, he's, he, yeah, he, that's for he sure. He was a fantastic, fantastic, I mean, he was a man with a very interesting voice. He was a singer's singer. He was a tenor of all tenors. He, he sat the bar, and yeah. no, nobody will ever be able to reach that. That he did, that he did. Now, any children? Yeah, yeah, I got six. Six. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, pretty fertile man, you know. <laughs> yeah, uh, my oldest is 41, my youngest is 17. Any singles in the bunch? Two. 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 Now, the, the other ones, when they open their mouth, it sounds like somebody hit them in the back with an axe. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, two. Yeah. So, how many boys? How many girls? Three boys, three girls. Okay, and, and I don't, you, we're not going to be looking for a group called the Blackbirds? I hope so, because, you know, I, I could use the money. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're not going to be another Joe Jackson now, are you? Uh, no, I, I think Joe started young. Uh, the thing about it, <laughs> if I were to try to put them together now, uh, only they would reach the benefits. I'd be in heaven, but it's okay. No, no. no. 
Now, you know, you, you spoke very highly about Eddie Kendricks. Yeah. Who is Charles Blackman's favorite entertainer? My favorite entertainer is a gospel uh, entertainer and preacher by the name of Rance Allen. Rance Allen. Oh, yeah. Rance. Yeah. Let me oh, tell you, Rance a bad boy now. Let me tell you something. When you stand next to Rance, you better bring your A game. Because just when you're getting ready to quit, he's just getting started. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's my favorite. I had the opportunity of seeing Rance a couple of times, and oh. I tell you, he is a awesome, oh awesome. My God. And, and I tell you what's so wonderful about it, it's not a show with Rance. No, 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 no. He, no. Uh, Rance, this man loved the Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. <laughs> and I've tried to figure out where. I, I found, uh, I believe, uh, uh, some footage on him where he was playing. He also plays guitar. He was playing guitar, and it was it was a Massive crowd. It, it, it'll lose me right now exactly where it was, but he was saying, I mean, God Almighty, uh, he's just, uh, God certainly has his hands on that man. Charles, uh, uh, let's go back. Uh, any regrets about any decisions you ever made in your career? Absolutely not. Uh, you know, there were times that I got depressed because I used to use the term, I want to make it. I want to make it. And then uh, it dawned on me, what is making it? Uh, and, and here's something that I learned from Eddie. Eddie said, you know, I kept telling him I want to be a star, I want to be a star. Eddie says, look, you're a star whenever you say you're a star. Okay. Don't, don't, don't wait on people to call you a star. Right. You keep your craft up, you, you rehearse. He said, this has everything to do with you uh, being centered in, within yourself. Don't get the big head. He said, you're not better than anybody, but nobody's better than you. And he said, just one more thing, which is most important of all. It's not important that you, that you become a star. It's important that you know the man who made the stars. All right, you all know right. That, uh, I like no that. No regrets, no regrets. I like that. Now, now, Charles, you know, everybody hear all this negative stuff about the music industry, yeah. about the women, the drugs, right. and this and that. Uh, did you ever get involved with any of that? Uh, came close, came pretty close. In fact, I used to drink quite a bit. Okay. And uh, the thing about it, um, show up the show, you know, running with the ladies, and uh, I saw where it was going to ruin me. And uh, because I, had, I, I was indulging every night, thank God today I, I haven't drank in a long, long time. And I'm grateful for that because I saw so many falling by the wayside. And by me being so young at the time, I, I don't, you know, the thing about it, this, the drugs that they have today, I, my goodness. Charles, what would you say to young people today that's trying to break into the music business that's been exposed to these type of things? Well, first of all, preparation is everything. Uh, I always start with this, even though it may be cliche to some. Uh, you have to have a Christ-centered life uh, because uh, uh, without him, uh, I can do nothing. And with him, all things are possible. So, so, so what you're saying is that they should focus on, even though they may want to sing R&B music, you still need some God in there to make that work for you. No, you need all God. All God. All God okay, to make it all work right. for you because he, uh, he is the, the controller of everything. And he, it is he who gives us uh, our gifts not and not uh, we ourselves. The thing about it is as long as we don't become cocky, arrogant, and nobody can tell you what to do. In fact, it's okay to say I don't know. Ask questions. Learn the business first. Learn the business first. Absolutely. Uh, you know, because there, there's a thing. It's called, that's why it's called entertainment business. Uh, if you don't, the entertainment part is primarily easy if, if you work at your craft. But uh, no business, no show. Now, what would you say to, <laughs> let me put it this way, what would you say to the saved people that say Charles Blackman is going to hell for singing R&B music? Wow. I'd say to them, first of all, uh, don't judge my sin and your sin because <laughs> the sin is sin. But the thing about it I found out a long time ago, uh, after reading scripture, even the disciples who followed Christ did not give up their job. Uh, you know, one was a tax collector, I believe his name was Matthew, Luke was a doctor, and I just happened to be a singer entertainer. My calling, my ministry is preaching, but my livelihood is how I take care of my family. 
Uh, you know, a lot of folk say, well, I, I don't believe that. Well, I got no control over what they believe, but I do know that everything that I'm doing is just fine as long as I keep God first. Have you ran into those type of people during your career, the ones that walked up to you and said, boy, come here, let me talk to you? <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean, the ones that, you know, the one, especially from old school. And they, they want to tell me all, you know, that, you know, what I'm doing. You, you're all right. You're a nice man. But I don't know. This is the funny thing they say. You, you don't need to be singing them blues. Well, I tell them to myself, well, blues is necessary too. Again, as long as we keep God first. They, they, it, the thing that gets me is that they would come out strong. Well, you know, now the Lord don't want you singing that kind of music, but right. they'll turn around and ask for an offering. <laughs> well, well, that's another story. Uh, the thing about it, you know, uh, tithing is it's it's about the heart. It's not about the amount. But you know, the amazing thing is, they said you ought to come out of the club, and I said that's why I met you. That, that's why I met you. You know, the thing. And that's why I made this money exactly. that you're asking for. But here's the thing: a lot of people really don't realize uh, Jesus. He didn't hang out with good people. First of all, there are none. No, not one. Jesus hung out with uh, thugs, uh, prostitutes. beggars, prostitutes, you know. So, I mean, you, you, you need... Murderers. Yeah, oh, plenty, plenty. Rapists, <laughs> you, you know. That's where he went because these are the ones that uh, need to be saved. I, I know I needed him and I still do, you know. Now, we're going to wrap this up. Okay. Because I know that you, you got to hit the road because you got so many places to be. But... What can we look for out of Charles Blackman in the next five years? Well, first of all, I, I pray that I'm still here. That's, that's the first thing. I can only, the only thing that I can give you is my best. Uh, when people ask you for more than your best, they're really asking you for too damn much. Right. But your best is all that you can give. Uh, you will get everything that's been put within me. I won't slack. On my concerts, I will sing until I can't sing anymore. I will entertain until I can't entertain anymore. You won't have to worry. When you hear me sing, I'll be singing live. I won't, you won't have to worry about me lip syncing and all that. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with that. Uh, but the thing about it is, uh, there's a feel when it comes down to entertaining. People can tell, if I don't believe it, you are not gonna believe it. So the best, you know, I pray that, uh, when my, you know, when my time is up, I will have left a great legacy to my family and to my fans. Ladies and gentlemen, you heard it for yourself. Mr. Charles Blackman, the man himself. And before we go any further, if you haven't heard the news, uh, the legendary artist Prince oh. passed on today. Oh, We'd yeah. like to send our prayers and everything to his family. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is a big shock for yeah, the yeah, world yeah. and especially folks in the music industry. He certainly will. He, he'll be missed. Uh, Charles, his, anything special you want to say to uh, his know, family? This man, is we, to the family, uh, I, I, I can't say that I know how you feel because I don't. But I know that God is able to restore you all to the joy of your salvation. Um, apparently, God needed to make his garden prettier. Uh, the only thing that I can say is... Uh, be blessed in the Lord. Uh, he will see you through. Rest in peace, Prince. Charles Blackman, y'all. Thanks for having me.